thanks for for uh, coming to this uh, track the three of us work in dcu we work in open education online uh, programs um, and basically this whole presentation is about our increased efforts in the last few months to improve the accessibility and inclusion on our on these open education online uh, programs um, so basically i suppose uh, to put this in context uh, our disability and learning support service tell us that proportionally our programs tend to attract students with particular uh, impairments and conditions uh, especially those, you know, people with chronic illnesses or people with, you know, severe anxiety disorders or, or those kinds of things where coming on campus all the time would just not be feasible or desirable for them. Um, and uh, that that is something that we have been conscious of. And I suppose prior to this year, we would have felt that we had a reasonably strong uh, approach to accessibility and inclusion. We work very hard on our online learning materials to try to ensure that, you know, we're following universal design for learning principles for, you know, creating online learning materials. And um, we would be proactive at the start of the year about contacting all the students registered with the Disability and Learning Support Service to sort of check in with them, make sure that they know they can contact us at any time if, if, if their condition is like, uh, causing them to have a bit of a lull and that's coming at the same time as there's a peak of work that we can sort that out and all that kind of thing and putting you know or or and and then putting accommodations uh, in place for students um when when we when they when they need them or if if they are having a period of of poor health or whatever the case may be but some stuff has happened in the last few months that really made us take a step back and look at that more and that's when I'll, I'll hand over to Sophia so in the, in the last few months, then, and this is really within, uh, since the beginning of this academic year, uh, 21, 22, um, we have had a number of things that really made us um, stop and reflect on our practices and on the way we were supporting, we are supporting our students. Um, one thing first is that the increase in number, we were, first of all, we've been focusing uh, mostly on, on, we've been looking at the uh, psychology, psychology major programs in terms of numbers and the increase in numbers there uh, meant that there were more students uh, that were also registered um, with the, um, uh, for, for disabilities uh, and various conditions. Um, and it was also recommended by the head of the DLSS uh, that, you know, some, some more training uh, uh, should be provided to, to us in terms of, you know, in trying to support students, especially uh, those on the autism spectrum. Um, but then we also noticed and then there was a sort of gap in terms of what was available in terms of information uh, about the students that were registered with uh, the DLSS and what was available then to, um, to part-time academic staff. Uh, so we tried to, to really bridge that and, and fix that. And, and as, as, as James was saying, we were really reach out to uh, our staff as well and trying to communicate more clearly and broadly with them as well. Um, we, we had a number of students uh, that uh, reached out to us um, and really let us know where things were not working for them. We had one, we have one student who uses assistive technology, and the student highlighted, uh, for example, that the you know automatically generated closed captions on Zoom were not enabled in the class, and it then would arise the staff and not being aware that this feature had actually been made available in May, June last year, 2021. Um, we also had two students that were that are on the autism spectrum that reached out to us uh, to let us know that the, the format of, of the forums that we use on our platforms really does not suit um, and that does not suit them. They, they, they really experienced a lot of confusion in dealing with, uh, on, with, with the information on the platform. Um, and, and it's just overwhelming for them. Um, so we, we had a meeting then with them and uh, to, to really trying to understand where, how, uh, how these things are impacting on them. Um, Finally, we also had um, 
we also realized that these students then were trying to reach our uh, the, the, the academic staff, the, the teachers directly via email and trying to really avoid the use of the forum, uh, which is something actually we have always discouraged students to do because by using the forum instead they would um, all the information will be made available to all students and not just to ask the question. So all these, uh, these are examples of the kind of things that arise for us this year that made us really stop and reflect on our, our practices. And I'll, I leave it on to Chloe. To Thank you, Pia. Um, so what we have decided to do is take an evidence-based uh, reflection and planning cycle process. And to do this, obviously, the first step was to reflect on our current knowledge um, and then to catalogue any information that we have as a team on accessibility and inclusion. So the first step in, catalog in cataloguing this information was to create a set of guidelines that we made available to all of our teaching teams across the humanities programme. And here is just a screenshot of um, the table of contents included inside that set of guidelines. So we have an introduction to UDL. Um, all of our teaching team would be fairly familiar with the UDL principle to begin with. But again, this set of guidelines is now available on our VLE for new staff um, coming into uh, DCU Connected as well. The next section looked at inclusive teaching, so ensuring that there are multiple instructions available during class time for students to engage in certain activities and to just be aware that all of the content is relatively friendly to assistive technology such as screen readers. Then developing accessible documents, so ensuring that all of the PDFs are readable by screen readers and that uh, Word documents are structured by headings, etc. Um, and developing accessibility within the materials we use in our VLE, which is Loop. Um, one of the main points that Sophia brought up was also increasing the accessibility during Zoom, so including live captions during our synchronous classes, um, and also just to talk through the presentation slide if there's any uh, images that screen re readers would not be able to pick up on as well. And the last point then is supporting students on the autism spectrum, which is also a point brought up by Sophia. We do have a larger ratio in our psychology modules, which is why we're focusing on that in this particular project. And one of the ways that we have helped our staff support uh, students on the autism spectrum is through trainings that we've held with one of the occupational therapists within DCU. And these trainings have been put up as a resource and the recording has been put up as a resource within our VLE and we'll also be scheduling further trainings in the future to be able to keep up that knowledge base uh, in supporting all of our students in terms of accessibility and inclusion. So that brings us to what we plan to do next and this is the main research uh, question that's going to be uh, present throughout the project. Uh, we've already applied for ethical approval and some local funding to help us with this. And the project is going to be based around a series of interviews that we're doing with our own students and with our staff and teaching team. And these interviews are going to be based around the question of how we can improve this level of accessibility and inclusion after the, the reflection that we've already done and after the actions we've already taken. Um, and given that there is such a strong uh, knowledge base in our team already in terms of accessibility and inclusion, hopefully any improvements that are suggested will be relatively feasible. Um, and as a part of this reflection cycle and iter iterative process, we're going to be then revisiting um, students and, and staff after we've implemented these changes to get further feedback and reflections on how we can continually improve um, in, in, in the best practices possible. So that was a very quick and snappy, uh, <laughs> I suppose, whistle stop tour of the project that we're hoping to do. Again, just trying to, to keep it in time with the, the limits that we had today. But any questions about the project or how we hope to go about the interviews or accessibility and inclusion best practices in general, feel free to pop them in the chat.
Thank you so much, um, James, Sophia, and and Chloe. That was that was wonderful and a fantastic job condensing all of that in, in, into your shortened time frame. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, on the on on, on the good side, we do have uh, a couple of minutes for questions. So if anyone has questions, you can pop them in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand on Zoom, we can put a question out um, to the team. And um, I just want to say, I I always conceive of UDL as a a journey or a process, and that we can never be truly done with UDL and I think you're really living that here I, and I commend you for listening to your students and responding and looking inwards and trying to reflect and improve your practice because I don't think often people people do that and, and this is a, um, a great example. I have a quick question for you which is um, when you collated these resources and guides for your wider team of tutors what was the general reaction from them around um, uh, I suppose, in essence, you were you're asking them to be more mindful and maybe um, uh, place more work and more effort to ensure that they reach uh, uh, more students and make their teaching more inclusive. And I was wondering what was the kind of what was the reaction of your wider team of tutors when when you broached that topic with them? It, I mean, it, it, there wasn't a negative response, but I suppose when you when you put on training and you you make resources available, it's hard to know the levels of which people are taking that on board. You know, uh, I mean, I think our initial our initial efforts were very much on um, very practical stuff. Uh, let's say around accessibility and Zoom, and just ensuring that all staff understood that like the following settings need to be turned on in your background settings so that the closed captions can be enabled. Uh, and there was a couple of other things that were highlighted by people using assistive technology that like if certain if um, touch up my appearance or mirror my appearance, mirror my screen is turned on that causes issues for the screen reader or that causes issues for certain technology. So asking people to turn those off. So it was like, let's say that was very practical stuff. And we were trying to make sure that there shouldn't be anyone who is using Zoom who doesn't have the settings turned on. And then. Uh, you know, then you have to remember because of the way Zoom, Zoom is set up, you have to remember to actually turn it on at the start of a class and then telling the students that if someone forgets to do that, it is fine for you to sort of raise your hand and say, can you turn on the closed captions? You know, so we were starting from there. And then I think we then we circled back to starting to put those resources together and again, trying to put it put out those messages around, you know, this is about accessibility. This is about sort of um an approach where if you turn on the closed captions, it, it works for more than people who just who need them. You know, someone is in a crowded place, they can't hear the presentation, but now there's the closed caption. So now they can follow the present the presentation, even if they don't have any condition or impairment. So it's it's like trying to switch switch gears. And I mean, personally for me, I found some elements of it challenging, you know, challenging my thinking or challenging the status quo or just challenging the kind of fast paced, like moving through the routine of an academic year when you have to stop and go, OK, hang on. You know, are people putting all text in their PowerPoint slides, you know, because if they're not, that's a problem, you know, and then so again, I think the accessibility around um, creating documents and like the checkers that now exist, like, you know, we had a solid approach, but then there was definitely categories where we need to do more work in those in those areas. Um, but like I'd say staff training and staff awareness and all that, that's just I think it's going to be an ongoing, ongoing, ongoing process. Yeah, it's kind of like it's it's sort of always, always chipping away and always, always trying to kind of uh, get people to do uh, one small change little by little, you know, uh, doing more and more to to make sure their teaching is more yeah. inclusive. Orna, Orna's um, challenging us about whether we're openly sharing resources. We will openly share everything. Currently, we made it and it's inside our closed institutional VLE. But uh, absolutely, we, we, we will at the end of the project, we will probably package up everything we have or everything we've we've found and like share it all uh share it all out 